This is Nisha. Today we have Ms. Rajalakshmi Srinivasan, Director of Product Management from Zoho Corporation, Private Limited. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Uh, your work culture stands unique from many elements. How did you accomplish this, ma'am? Work culture is not something that uh, you accomplish overnight. <clears throat> it is something that is part of our, that's a culture. So it has been part of us since our inception by what our CEO and other uh, leaders and mentors have thought through. And we, we strive hard to continue the same. Maybe if I have to say, give an example, people first approach that has been our culture always. The freedom that we have, the responsibility that comes along with it, the trust that we have on our employees. <clears throat> These are all the value adds that attribute to the culture and that's what has helped us to grow to where we are today. So it's always people first and that's how it is. Many of the students dream is to place in your company now. Can you please share the strategies? I think I get this question wherever I go and uh, it's not any particular strategy. Today Zoho is known to many people, students know it a lot. That was not the case 25 years ago or even 15 years ago. So if you ask me, there is no single strategy, but the passion in the students, in the area of their work, be it development or marketing or uh, technical support or whatever domain that they choose, the passion that they have for that is something that will take them to places, not just in Zoho, any company for that matter. So that is something that I keep telling students, be passionate about what you want to do and uh, develop the required skills and the depth of understanding of your domain, your area and where you want to work. So that could be attributed as a strategy for students. What is trending in the top product-based company like you and uh, how do you stay ahead, ma'am? Trending, if you ask me, that will again change based on the product that we are building and the technology space we are at. <clears throat> we are a product-based company and we have end-to-end uh, -end product for any business operation where we call ourselves the operating system for your entire business. So technologies, maybe the newer technologies today, if you have to say the... Um, AI, chat GPTs and uh, other development technologies itself, they keep changing and new technologies keep coming in. Maybe in our company, I would say we would look at what is the market, what are the technological trends and then we will take those relevant that are required for us, keeping our customers in mind. So that's what the product companies does. Existing customers are your uh, important people to take care. So you have to keep them in mind and bring in changes that are required because changes are also needed. Technology changes are also needed. So when you take them, make sure you don't cause any damage to existing customers. So that's something we keep in mind when we adopt technologies. And we do a lot of research work in the areas that are upcoming and make sure to take in those that are relevant for us. In the personal interview of a hiring process, how would you judge a right candidate, ma'am? This is again a very subjective question, I would say. Because that's a personal interview. If they have cleared all the technical routes, I'm saying my own personal <coughs> experience, it might vary from person to person. When we talk to the students, at least when I talk to them, the right attitude is something that I look for. I think that can be judged based on how they respond, the patience that they have or the way they approach a question that is being asked. It's not that they have to answer everything or solve every problem that is asked. Their approach towards problem solving and the sense with which they are talking, the depth of understanding in whatever they say they know of. So the honesty there plays a major role. That does not mean to say that uh, I don't know everything, be very honest. That also plays a, that's a, it's a personal judgment. But uh, if, I, if you ask me, I would say 
the aptitude is important that if, even if they have cleared all the aptitude and they are technically excellent aptitude plays a major role to gel with the company culture because because teamwork is important team bonding is important so that's something that i would look for in a candidate what are the skills that candidate should possess technically to survive in the competitive industry ma if you ask me a particular skill i would just say it as the continuous learning attitude okay. because learning is not something lot of people think that uh, i have done my college i am done with it i have completed my studies i am going to join an organization but that's not how real world is technology is keep changing programming languages keep changing what i studied in my college to what i work is different and what i work now is different similarly for the students also the technologies that they are studying will change we don't know what's going to come in the future so that means at any point in time the continuous learning is important bad minimum that is important for you to keep yourself updated with what's happening in the industry so that mindset that's a skill that i would say which is important for students for them to survive in any industry particularly technology industry so i keep telling them this one phrase if you are not keeping yourself updated you will be outdated for which continuous learning is important what tips and guidelines would you suggest for the entrepreneurial mindset students ma'am a lot of students these days they want to be an entrepreneur do a startup which is actually a welcoming move which is a welcoming trend they would say but then a lot of time they easily give up so the two important things that i would tell students that i keep telling them are one is there will definitely be failures when you want to do a startup when you want to when you try doing something there might be situations where you will fail it's okay to fail but it's not okay to give up or stand there just take the learnings from that and continue to apply the learning in the next things that you do that's the first tip and the second one is lot of time students come to me and say i want to do something but i don't know what to do whatever landscape i take there are already players who are there that's how landscape will be that's a market potential there is market potential there so go deeper is something that i would say whatever you you have chosen your domain dig deeper to find out what is a missing piece even if there are players already you can understand go deeper and understand then you will see oh some portion is missed can i make a business out of it so understanding the landscape is important for which you have to go deeper to understand so that you can come up with your idea so failures will happen learn to come out of it get the learnings and move on from there and go deeper in your landscape to find out what is the missing piece to make a business out of it those two tips i gives before 24 years being a fresher you have chosen a startup company why ma'am there is no specific reason i should say i think it happened to me to be honest fresh out of college i was actually placed in a, another organization but this is way back in 1999 where we had this y2k problems companies were not offering the offers that were given so my job was also getting delayed and uh, we all went there were few others like me and we went and talked to our professor and uh, our ma'am she was the person who said who just put us in different companies so she knew our uh, uh, ceo then and then she said uh, okay you were you'll work for some time you go join this company or you go apply here you will work for 2 years and then go abroad for studies you go to this place so she just segregated us like that and that's how i landed here i was not even aware of the company then and the company was not even called zoho corp during that time frame it was called bembo systems but uh, i should say it i was lucky in that sense so i went there so the product company was not my choice it was i should i should attribute that to my professor she said or she knew me she said this will fit you and from day one the work culture the learning opportunities i had the freedom that i had to experiment new things the responsibilities that i had on my job 
it's not that my presence my absence will also be felt and that's what the job satisfaction you have at the end of the day so from day 1 to day to day here 24 years every day has been the same so that's how and my professional goals merged with the or matched with company's goals also the company gave me that space and i am not a person who can just sit till sit idle at one place i take up a lot of things do a lot of things and i had space to do that i think it just happened and i'm happy and lucky in that sense recently many common people have a question now will ai replace humans i think this is generally a fear that people have if you look at studies and reports that are being shared there is only one thing that i would say it's not the ai who is going to or the technology as such is going to replace human it's a human with the knowledge of ai will replace another human so the potential is there opportunity is there it's in your hands to learn it and equip yourself with that there are studies that says ai will only generate more jobs than it is going to take away and that's how every technology will be and i think that's a common fear maybe some monotonous jobs that are being done may be replaced with ai but not everything but anyway those are monotonous jobs which is which is boring so try to do something interesting so as i said earlier the keeping updating yourself mindset when you have that there is no fear on any technology today ai tomorrow it could be anything else also technologies will keep changing it will keep evolving how much are you able to adapt to that is what will keep you fit in the right moment so there's no replacement at all it's just the fear being an iron lady who is going to celebrate a silver jubilee next year in his in your professional career can you please uh, give any advice to the young minds who is fear of taking risk man so if you ask me i mean it's not any advice i would say it's just how i handle things okay every person situation is different and every person's uh, uh, surroundings is different and the way they handle things are different but one thing that everyone should keep in mind is the learning that i talked about and don't give up that's important things will keep changing how much are you equipped to take up that challenge because when there is a there is always this inhibit fear of will i be successful if i do this and particularly women if you ask they want to become a master at whatever they are doing and then take up that opportunity you will never get a chance when a new technology is there when it is put up on the table in the first place for you to take up accept the challenge the fear of failures is what is inhibiting people from accepting the challenge it's okay a lot of time lot of things we have we fear what will others think if i make a mistake i i will not be able to give my 100% to it there are so many attributes we do it for ourselves just get rid of it if you are giving your time and energy you will be able to find out what it is and learn it so that's the learning thing and when you when you want to learn it's not just the learning that you do from your mentors or from your seniors the next generation are definitely smarter than us we have to accept that and be open to learning from anyone around we learn a lot from our next generation i learn a lot from my children i learn a lot from the new fresh minds that are who are working with me so that openness in learning without any ego associated will take you long places and that's how you will be able to understand what's happening at the same time accept the challenge and apply it in your don't give up at any point in time don't give up and the other important aspect that you have to do is time management that's again lot of people ask me how are you able to balance work balance work life balance there the advice if you ask me is it's not the balance of your work and your personal time i always say balance three things you have to spend time for your work for your family and for yourself so when you are able to do that you will have you can achieve a lot of things and to do that prioritization is important prioritization and delegation 
it's not that you have to end up taking everything yourself and do everything yourself don't try to be a master of everything you can do multitasking but at the same time don't try to do everything you have to prioritize both at home and at work so that you can maintain the balance of the three aspects that i talked about so these are some small things that i follow which i am able to in all my career all along and i think that is important for everybody to think through and maintain a right balance every words you utter is really really inspiring man many students will get motivated and uh, as they can i feel that they can achieve their dream companies so thank you so much for giving me this time and uh, asking questions i'm sure uh, there is lot of scope for each and every individual in their area of interest it's just in each and every one of us to understand what we want to do and be successful in what we want to do all the best thank you